this thing. Uh, I don't know how this is going to sound, Bill. We'll turn this back in a minute and we'll play it back and see if it's about right. What I want you to do is just talk just as natural as you can. And Bill, I think we can just want to talk natural about this situation. This is going to be an interview uh, with Bill Johnson, president of the Federal Labor Union, 21754 at the Robert Shaw Fulton plant here in Knoxville. And this is Paul Christopher talking. I'm the FLCL Regional Director in Region 8 for Tennessee and Kentucky. Now, I'll ask Bill, Bill Johnson, if of his own free will and accord, and if he had any reservations about it at all, not to, we just forget about it, but because a complaint was made by Charles Goodlin, G -O -O -D -L -I -N, international representative of the Boilermakers Union, about a uh, I don't know what you call it a meeting or what, but anyhow, we got together, and I want to, to add Bill Johnson was there, and this was down at at Bill's Tavern, uh, which is located on Kingston Pike in Knoxville, almost directly across the street from the Holland Tourist Court. Now, I understand that, uh, uh, I don't know what happened, but uh, that got them together, but as I understand it, and Bill, you correct me if there's anything wrong about this, as I understand it, the, uh, uh, when I saw you and Leonard, Ed, uh, uh, Leonard Webb and Gordon Deaton, uh, you were with these two fellows. It turned out that they were Charlie Goodlin and, uh, George Lockwood, representing the Boilermakers Union. That's right. And this was down at Bill's Tavern, and this was some some night late in June, or latter part of June. I don't know exactly what the date was, and I don't think it's especially important, but as I understand it, Goodlin made the complaint about me uh, alleging in uh, a letter he wrote to his international union that uh, I was uh, drunk, uh, or that I was drinking mighty heavy, or that I uh, uh, was under the influence of something pretty bad, and that uh, uh, I must have, at least he must have interpreted some things that were said as, a, as being insults from me to him or to his organization, but as I understand it, he complained that that I, Paul Christopher, was very much uh, prejudiced uh, in favor of any CIO unions uh, uh, now, and I was prejudiced against all AFL unions, uh, and especially the Boilermakers for some strange reason. Now, I, don't, uh, I don't know. Now, what I want you to do, Bill, yes. is just tell me, and I want you to answer these questions, and Talk just as honestly as you know how. Don't uh, worry at tall back guys, just talk. I'll certainly do that. All right. Go ahead. Well, uh, uh, this uh, night uh, in question uh, that we were down this tavern, uh, we were called by the Boilermakers uh, to have a meeting with them. And so we had that, in this meeting, they were at the Highland Tourist. They would usually get a room there when they're in Knoxville. And we went over and had a meeting with them, and we went to a place below Bill's Tavern and had a steak supper. Now, they, they called you up 
At your home? Did they call you or Larry Webb? Or they called me and told me, asked me if I could get the committee together. I see. Yeah, you told me you'd try to. And I told them I'd try to. And I did get the, uh, the uh, committee together, uh, the plank committee, which is a negotiating committee, uh, consisting of five people, excepting Rex Sharp. He wasn't there. I see. Well, now, then you and Leonard Webb and Gordon Deaton and uh, Wallace? Wallace Sinney. And y'all went down the, you met them at the Holland Tourist That's right. <coughs> and then you went out to, uh, on down the uh, Kingston Pike, the Low Bills Tavern. Eat, 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 eat supper. Okay. And steak had, supper. And uh, I, uh, yeah. And then we decided You to, were their guests. And, we uh, were their guests. And they paid for it. Sure. Paid okay. for it. All right. And we came, uh, decided uh, uh, that we'd come back up to Bill's Tavern, and uh, we came back up to the Island Grill, and uh, they've got a bottle which uh, uh, contained uh, whiskey, and uh, we were going to, uh, said we'd go over to Bill's and get some ice and all have a drink. Mm -hmm. We went over there, and, and uh, so uh, we were sitting around the table, all of us, and I just ordered ice. And uh, uh, some of our committee from the Federal Labor Union, spied Mr. Crisper, uh, came, uh, he came to the, the dining hall. Uh, they were two places in beer. One of them is where they sell beer as a tavern, and the other is a dining place which they eat. And some of us uh, spied uh, you and uh, hollered and told you to come over. And you came over. We introduced you around and insisted that you sat and chat with us and uh, and talk and uh, and uh, you did uh, you sat down. And, well, I just uh, came over really to meet the right. guys and I didn't I told you I didn't want to that's put right. in to uh, see if, if this is not right. You that's say absolutely it. right. I said you know I was glad to met Mr. Goodman I was glad to met Mr. Lockwood and then I said now I'll leave you boys uh, it's nice to see you. Uh, but I didn't want to butt in on your conversation, and I figured that, uh, you know, that like some others, that you were being sort of courted, uh, that they, I knew the Boilermakers, uh, you know, sort of interested in getting you boys to affiliate with their organization. That's absolutely And I didn't right. want to butt in, and I said That's I did. Right. That's right. Okay. Sure. And, uh, so, uh, uh, you sit down with us. And, right, so uh, I I, I, and we asked you to have a drink with us, and you said you did not care for a drink, and insisted that you have a bottle of beer. And uh, well, I told him I said no, I don't. I don't want. Right. I've been drinking beer, and that's I don't right. want to mix it. That's, that's and then they said, right. I'll get a bottle of beer. I that's said, no, right. I think I've had enough. And they said, oh, right. I'll get another one. So then they called the girl. Over. That's right. They called the girl, but yeah. I paid for it. That's absolutely right. I wouldn't let them pay for the beer. You sure did. And then, and, and uh, so uh, uh, we had our drinks around, uh, poured with ice and uh, mixed uh, 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 seven ups. And uh, with the conversation began, and uh, Mr. Goodlin uh, began throwing accusations at, uh, at you that uh, you were trying to hold us from going anywhere, and and. Uh, uh, trying to persuade us to do this and that. And you were very polite and nice to him. And uh, after, and you told him you were just the regional director, that you didn't have any influence or wasn't uh, trying to get these boys to go anywhere. Uh, if they ever went anywhere, it'd be of their own mind, their own choosing. And I told him that I, he could ask the committee if that wasn't so. And right. I also said that to the membership in meetings of that local meeting. And uh, 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 Mr. Goodlin uh, wanted to know if he knew his rank, who uh, who he was, and uh, so uh, they were, the argument came over that. that he said, "Well, that, that uh, he hadn't been in labor uh, too long, but he was uh, that he knew his way around," and and, and that. Uh, 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 and, uh, and after he made the accusations, you you told him he right. did not uh, did not wasn't trying to get them to go anywhere. That if they went anywhere, it would be their own free mind and and what their uh, federal local labor union, the people at Fulton's wanted. And uh, so uh, 
he said two or three times in the in the conversation that you wouldn't that you couldn't bullshit uh, bullshit him around that uh, that he knew the facts of it and, and and he knew that you were trying your best to get to persuade or get the committee to go somewhere and then uh, so uh, uh, we we sat there I guess uh, I guess half hour well, I kept trying to yeah, get away. You know, I kept saying that then I, I don't want to get in an argument with you fellas. I just stopped by to say, "Oh, that's right." Then I, I after, think I better be going. That's right. Remember, I said that two or three right. times, Bill. Then after a while, I, uh, we got up and left. Yeah, I think you got up first and said, "Well, I'll see you boys." And uh, and Leonard Webb and wanted to stay a minute. That's right. And Leonard asked you to stay a minute. He wanted to talk yeah. to you. And uh, so when that expired, well, we left and and uh, went on out of the tavern yeah. and the boy said well we'll come back over to the High highland courts and we won't talk to you uh, a few minutes now, that was the boy to make that's, that's, that's right if y'all are left and i stayed with leonard well that's absolutely right uh because leonard asked me to that's stay right. another minute he wanted to talk to me then y'all went on out that's right and uh, y'all went over to highland tourist Court. that's right now did not did i or did i not i'm I think I did. I'm sure I did. I asked the guys to come by and see me at the office. I you asked them right. the next day. And they said and they would. They, they would they come would. and uh, make a visit with you. And I told them I appreciate it. And, uh, that, you know, you remember any conversation? You kept accusing me, you know, of, uh, of, uh, being, you know, against the boilermakers. I, yeah. I, I wouldn't, uh, I would you know, I do everything I could for CLU, but I wouldn't do anything for the AFL, and I wouldn't do anything special for the boilermakers. And I said, now, uh, either you uh, don't know what the situation is in Louisville, Kentucky, yeah, or you are just uh, uh, ignoring it, and I don't understand your attitude, uh, because up in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, where Art Potter got caught, remember, I mentioned yeah. Art Potter, Art Potter was the director, and and we just, uh, uh, we've been helping the boilermakers up there in one big situation. It was a big, it was a two turns plant, and uh, they've been uh, wanting that a long, long time, and also the steel workers have wanted it a long That's time. Right. They've been campaigning, and they worked the blooming thing out so that the boilermakers would have a free hand with no competition That's from right. the Steel Workers Union, and we worked that out, me and Art Potter, and uh, Steel Workers said, okay, if they can get it, let them go. And they've had a free hand, and we have a system. I told him that I story. You surely did. Also told him about a situation right across the river over in Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He, he maintained that all the time. That and they I had said, 
declaring that a mortgage. And he said that's a good enough reason. That's right.
then you went to St. Louis. That was the aluminum works. Aluminum works. Work. It was Eddie Stahl, Claude Mitchell, and uh, Matt Davis. Uh -huh. And the aluminum workers put it up there. They did. And now, where did you go in the mechanics? We went to uh, the Waldorf out on Clinton Bank and had a steak supper. Uh -huh. As their vice president, uh, uh, one of their vice presidents there, I don't recall his name. McClendon. Yeah, well, he's an international rep. He's one of the vice presidents. I don't remember his name. Uh -huh. But anyhow, on this meeting, the whole executive board, which composed of uh, 13 members, were at this uh, state supper. They were all invited. Uh -huh. All right, now, uh, tell me. And I want to pin you down a bit. I'm going to turn up. I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. A minute ago, I asked you if any one of your executive board members had been in favor of any one, two, or three, or four, or whatever it was, and the rest of neutral, as he said it, it were any of you ever in favor of affiliating with the Boilermakers? Uh, have you told any of them that you were in favor of it, or just what the heck? Uh, well, uh, uh, not to my knowledge, the committee, uh, they, as they told the internationals when they made the trip that they couldn't uh, affiliate with them uh, without the acceptance of our people, and they told the boilermakers at that time they would be a, uh, in a year regular union meeting, a report wouldn't be given of their officers and officers and the one that they had met on this trip. And as to my knowledge, never was given any promise by any of the committee that they would go in the Boilermakers. In fact, uh, they told McGowan and, uh, and uh, President uh, Calvin at that time, and they were very nice on it, and they said they knew that we couldn't accept it as a committee of uh, uh, five people, which went to the thing, and, and they weren't going to insist that we do, but they wanted to bring us out and let us look our office over and see if uh, we would be favor if the boilermaker would be favorable to our union, want to investigate. And we told them that we would go back home and make a report on them, and did not tell them at any time that we would join their international uh, uh, to any of them. And we came back home and made the report to our people, and went on for s uh, several days until they came up, and when it came up, uh, it was brought to the, the in the union meeting, regular union meeting, to give a report on the contract. It was brought by the people that they thought it would be time to affiliate with an international uh, by a motion. And at this meeting, uh, uh, Leonard Webb, if the people asked him a direct question. He had the microphone at the time and was uh, uh, speaking. And they asked him a direct question. They said, well, what is your recommendation? Yeah. And at that time, he said, well, I will speak for myself, but not any other committee. But at that time, we had a meeting with the five, five people. And this is the first indication that we ever made that we would be favorable to the inter-international. And we discussed it among ourselves and uh, uh, discussed all the trips and everything that we'd seen. We weighed and balanced it, and uh, uh, by the steel workers having part of our plane already in the steel workers, and by the uh, uh, other things that we knew that would be favorable to our union to make it stronger and a better union, we uh, decided, as a committee of five, that we, if called on, would recommend the steel workers as the international union for the people of Fulton to get into of our labor union, the federal local labor union, to uh, affiliate with. And that was, uh, that was uh, when was that? That was the meeting you had last Friday. That, that, that was, uh, that was uh, it wasn't a special meeting. It was a meeting we had to make uh, uh, 
uh, report on the contract. See, yeah. when the contract... Wait a minute, I want to get this date pinned down. I don't know it was I Friday. It. Friday. I don't know what I said at the beginning of this uh, recording or not, but today is the 18th day of August, August 18, 1956. And looking back on the calendar, you're talking about a meeting that must have been held. Uh, it was held on the 10th day of August. That was Friday, the 10th of August. Uh, that's that's, uh, and that's the first time that. y'all ever indicated at all to the membership or among yourselves had come to any agreement that's about right. what union you that's thought right. that you, your membership would be best off. That's with. right. Okay. Now we uh, met with those people and we told them all that they had a good internet. And, and uh, 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 but we didn't show favor to anyone until we met with a committee of five men and we weighed and found what would be good for our people of a federal local labor union to affiliate with. And that was the, uh, the answer that we came up with and was prepared to give it to the people on Friday, but the people did not ask for it, only asked Leonard for his recommendation. And Leonard gave them his recommendation. He says, this is firstly my recommendation that we enter, uh, uh, affiliate with the steel workers of America. But he did not say that this was a recommendation. No, he did report. not. Did not. Just said as a personal That's recommendation. Right. Now let's get back to this Bill's Tavern down here in uh, on uh, Kingston Pike back in June when I first met Goodman and uh, and uh, George Lockwood. And uh, now you remember that Smith, when I, uh, I'm, I remember I sat down with you boys yeah. uh, at your invitation. That's right. Uh, this was a chance meeting. I'd like to make that clear that there was nothing planned when, about it. it when, we, uh, when we when uh, we met you, we didn't dream of even seeing you in, in, anywhere down there, and it was a, just a chance meeting. As you say that uh, we just happened to see you were walking through, and we hollered in motion. Well, I'm all over, Paul. And if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, now the way I remember it, I was. Uh, See, I was sitting out there in the open tavern park, you know, where you know the windows are, and you see that outdoors and everything. Yeah. And uh, I don't know which one it was, but one of the boys, one of our, you know, committee that I knew, I can guess it must have been you or Leonard or Gordon, maybe it was, I don't know, but well, somebody spied me. Somebody was going to the John. Yeah. And uh, I, you know where the John is yeah. out there in the open park. Yeah. And he spied me and. Uh, said, come on in, we got some calls you want to meet. And I said, you know, I saw, I guess I better not Well, I, so. I didn't know anything about, well, about that. Well, I mean, the, somebody uh, did. Or, but but uh, first I seen you, that you were coming in, and, and I believe it was in the cell, but I said, come on over, Paul, and meet some of the boilermakers. Yeah. 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 Well, now, I wanted to make it clear that this was a chance meeting. It sure was. I also want to make it clear. I'm making no denial, see, yeah. of the fact that I was drinking beer on the outside, sitting there in the booth before I ever saw you boys. Well, I didn't know, know that. Right. The only uh, beer that I saw you drink was one bottle. Well, I had some beers. Well, I, I had several I beers sitting that. out there in the thing. I see, I live right up above there. Yeah. And uh, the and I stopped in there a long time. I get through with the union meeting and uh, go by the. Uh, Go by the tavern before I go home. It's just yeah. a couple blocks of the house from the Bill's Tavern. I go up King's Bike, up past Sutherland, there in the Holland Hill. And uh, uh, now I'm not denying, see, that I was drinking. Uh, I'm not at all. Uh, and I, as far as I was concerned, uh, uh, and you see, the charge was made, Bill, that I was awful nasty to Mr. Goodman, and I was awful nasty to Lockwood, or, you know, that I insulted them somehow, or rubbed them the wrong way, or whatever it was. And you remember Smith was not there at the time I sat down, but Smith, uh, I think he was dancing with somebody. Thanks. And uh, came right. he came over, you know, before I left, and then that's when I met him. That's right. Uh, Smith was also represented with the Boilermakers. In other words, y'all were out with all three of them when you went to dinner. And you came back to the place, and then he wound up dancing with somebody else. Mr. Prescott, I think, uh, uh, fussing and 
about anybody taking a drink or having a drink or how many they had or nothing else, see? But I'm trying to, uh, I'd like to uh, make it clear that this was not a premeditated, prearranged, it was a meeting, it was just a chance get together uh, that uh, if I had not happened to be there in the first place, I never would have seen you or known that you were there. Uh, but now, you tell uh, uh, see if I, I don't know, you see, pretty much what I know about the letter that's written in wrote is pretty much what you uh, told him. And I don't think he told you too much except it's uh, He didn't tell me anything except when he wrote a letter in for making charges mm -hmm. against you for uh, uh, the things that we've been talking about, uh, such as persuading us to go into the Union, said uh, that uh, your conduct down there wasn't very good. Uh, to my knowledge, uh, that, that is what I've heard about the letter. I oh, never read right, it or right. never have seen it. Right, did I insult Mr. Goodman? Or uh, not Mr. in any way, uh, shape, form, manner I could see of. Oh. You were nice to him, polite. You, you held a no, very I'm nice kidding. conversation no, with him. You That's so right. You kidded us, you boys. Know. You told me. Uh, you said, Bill says, you, you're not any good. <laughs> and and uh, Gordon, you said, Gordon, you're sitting on the fence. And, 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 and then you said, Leonard, said, your politics is not right. And every one of us took it in a kitten form well, that's all and, 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 and uh, never in the least idea thought that, uh, uh, that any, uh, took any invocation of any, any of it as uh, making us mad or anything like that because we, we were, knew that you'd always been a, a good friend of ours and helped us in every way. Anytime that we ever called you would uh, go out of the way or, or anything to help us or do anything down at our, at our labor unit. Well now, uh, at the time, Bill, this uh, get-together down at Bill's Tavern is what we're still talking about. Yeah. At that time, uh, y'all had not gone up to Pennsylvania. We had Greenberg, not. Pennsylvania, we had not. It was prior right. to that time. No, this this happened before y'all went up to Pittsburgh, but y'all were scheduled to go. And he knew about it. The Remember, next, he made some the remarks next week, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we he made some remarks about. about the fact that you were going and said I engineered it. That's right. Uh, now, is that so? You just no, tell what the facts you are. You did not engineer it. I talked uh, 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 a long time. I'm new in Pop Shell. Talked at no length, end of length with him. And uh, we've been in contact. We were in contact. I think he was one of the first internationals that had ever contacted us uh, that he would like to have us in the steel workers union. Yeah. Well, now, international. when you say Pop Shell, you're talking about Courtney Shell. Courtney Shell, which is the international representative of the steel workers. Yeah. America. Okay, well, as long as we know who Pop is, yeah. see for this recording, uh, sure. The, uh, well, anyhow, I was accused of engineering it and trying to throw you boys over into the steel workers union or something, and uh, I just want to make it clear, you, you're the president of the local union, and uh, I guess I've talked to you as much as I have anybody else, and uh, uh, now, just tell me, Bill, for this recording, just for the sake of this recording, uh, what I said to you privately, what I said to you or any of the other boys when we were, you know, several of us together, like the executive board members or the competing committee yeah. people, or what I have said to the union membership, is it, has it all been the same, or have I talked different privately with you, or have I talked different privately with the committee, or have I said the same thing to you and the committee and to the membership, the same thing about it, and what did I say? Uh, Paul, you have never said anything different. Anyone that, that I have knowledge of the, as, uh, as a union body, you made several speeches to our bodies since you became regional director. Yeah. 
And uh, you've never said anything to any committee. You've never said anything to anyone as an individual would the least bit indicate that you had a preference or wanted us to go somewhere or wanted us to not stay a federal local labor union. You, within, I believe you felt it within your own heart that as long as we stayed a federal local labor union, you would help us in any way, shape, or manner you could to maintain a good union. Well, you know, and, uh, the director of the Army Forum for Federal Labor Union is yeah. my region. But now, what did I say? I said, any time, I, I, I know what I said. But, uh, I don't, maybe I didn't say it in such a way that everybody would understand it the same way. But uh, what did I say about this question of jurisdiction? Uh, on, on the question of jurisdiction, you never did indicate in any way. Well, I said that the union that you would affiliate with before Mr. Meany would approve it, right. that it would have to be a union, union that had a reasonably clear line of jurisdiction. Right. And, I, and I said that, you, that I didn't think Mr. Meany would approve it if y'all tried to affiliate with some union that had a phony jurisdiction like, say, the Musicians Union. I think to use one, I think I mentioned the Horseshoers yeah. Union and uh, several yeah, uh, unions away out which we wouldn't have any were, connection with our ob labor. Obviously unions yeah. that just absolutely had no remote jurisdictional claim or community of interest. Now, uh, what else did I say in terms of, in case you were going to affiliate with anybody what did I say the most important consideration was? To get in some uh, union, international union, that had uh, uh, jobs similar to ours or ours. And I said where the membership itself will be the best off, where the membership will get the most benefit. And they all pick out right. a union with, that's got a, re that, you know, can make a reasonable claim of jurisdiction. Right. And if you can justify a recommendation to affiliate with that union in terms of this, in your honest opinion, after your investigation of all the different ones, if in your opinion affiliation with that union would mean the most benefits to the workers, that Mr. Me, I thought would approve it when you got ready to do it. That's right. Uh, That's exactly what you told me. But it had to be in the best interest of the membership. That's right. That best was, in that the was membership the of uh, membership of our uh, uh, union. That's full. Uh, also uh, on this now, you uh, when it first came up and before we visited anybody, you 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 talked to me. In the terms that if any international came in, you would like for them to make a visit to your office and talk with you about it. Uh, and said, uh, Ben, as the uh, union was under your jurisdiction, you thought at least they could pay you that much courtesy. And, and if everyone we've talked to, we asked them. Now, Eddie Stahl of the Lumen Workers, we asked him. We had a, a meeting with him in the Fergus Hotel. And we asked him, and, and we also have asked Mr. Goodwin, uh, Mr. Lockwood, and uh, I thank you, state that you have asked him repeatedly, come and make a visit to your office. Well, I've said, I said this to all of the officers of all the federal labor unions uh, that I've talked to, that if any international union, I didn't care how many it was or which one, but that any international union, surely in Knoxville, I said, any international union that wanted to get either one of the federal labor unions we have in Knoxville, we had three outside of PBA, we had, we had three federal labor unions here. And I said, I thought that any international union that was working or seeing people or was campaigning or making any effort to persuade the members of either one of these federal labor unions to affiliate with that particular international union, that I would appreciate it as a courtesy if the representative 
uh, or if it's more than one, all of them, if they would come and see me, because my job was to try to service and help the federal labor unions. And if I knew, if I knew which uh, uh, organizations were interested and so forth, uh, it would help me to, uh, uh, you know, steer a more neutral course and. Uh, and I knew, of course, at the time, you remember when I talked to y'all, I knew doggone well that the machinists were all, uh, trying to get you to carry you down. And I knew also that the aluminum workers, yeah. and I, when I first talked to you, I didn't know about the boilermakers. But later on, when I heard that the boilermakers were uh, also hopeful that you were going to be with them. Well, the first international that ever mentioned anything about it was the steel workers that we talked at some length. And uh, our body, uh, local union, uh, indicated to their officers that if we were going to affiliate with the international, they would like to know a little bit about it, that they didn't want to go in and uh, uh, get into something that they didn't know anything about. Yeah. And uh, so that's the reason they started to, to send us out on those uh, uh, trips as representatives of our local union for information, which we got and brought them back, brought back, and told the, the body at our union meeting, regular union meeting. And uh, uh, well, the first trip we made was at the Luna Works and went to St. Louis. We kind of divided these trips up. Uh, some of the, the officers, the committeemen, didn't go on all of them, but I attended every one of them. As president, I went on every trip uh, uh, that was uh, uh, that uh, was taken, and at every meeting after we got back, I personally told the people of the local union what I found and what I saw and what the union was, how many membership, well, how big their membership was, approximately their treasure they had, and, and everything like everything that they told me within the union. Uh, uh, and their dues, and their bylaws, and, and, and what dues they charged, and everything like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the next mm -hmm. one we went to was uh, the the boilermakers. We yeah. went to Kansas City. Then after that, we had a meeting with the machinists on Clinton on Clinton Pike. Yeah. It's a, a, a but you didn't go to you didn't go to Washington the International Headquarters with the machinists. You didn't go to Washington. No, we uh, went to uh, on a Clinton Pike and had a meeting out there at the restaurant with the war uh, uh with uh, our executive board, which composed of 13 members, and uh, they were three members of the machinist uh, at the present, and uh, also Ed Haley, which was the court secretary. That's he was, uh, 155, uh, Lodge 155, uh, machinist. 555. 555 down the and uh, then the last trip we took was the steel workers. We went with Pop Shell, Leonard Webb, Gordon Deaton, and I went uh -huh. to Pittsburgh and uh, looked over the offices. Met uh, uh, I mean, looked over the offices. Met several of the uh, international representatives and several people of the uh, that uh, in the United the Steel Workers in the headquarters. Then, uh, well, on this trip up there, we came back by Youngwood, which is a Robert Shaw plane. We got permission to go through that plane, which they do already belong to the Steel Workers International. Uh, that's, that's a Robert yeah. Shaw plane. That's a Robert your, your Shaw plane. Your plane there in is a Robert Shaw plane. That's right. And they've got a Steel Workers logo up that's there right. in your federal that's right. Yeah. And uh, we were, uh, went through the plane, met management up there, talked individually to the workers, and, and uh, uh, found out the job rates, what they paid and everything, and then we came back and reported to the people. And I think that is the first start and the first turning point of our people wanting to go into international, any international when they heard of the rates that they paid up there, the people began to talk in the plane among themselves. Uh, we gave a report on it at a regular union meeting like we gave at uh, any other. 
uh, all the rest of them. They wasn't treated any different. That's right. Make the same kind of report. That's right. And uh, uh, the people began talking among themselves in the plane. I would go through the plane. They'd say, hey, Bill, come over, and I want to hear something about them, uh, about Youngwood. Or so this uh, Robert Shaw plane is in the, that is in the steel work. It's a race Green, and everything. Greensburg. Oh, Greensburg. Yeah. And uh, uh, so the people began to talk it up among themselves. And then on this Friday, the 10th, uh, we had a Tenth meeting, of 10th of August, that uh, we had that meeting for the purpose of telling the people that uh, uh, how we were getting along on our negotiation, what we were asking for, and also some of the proposals the company had given us back. And uh, so the people, the uh, motion was made and second, duly second in this meeting, that we have a special call meeting for the purpose of discussing and affiliating, voting to affiliate with the Steelworkers International. Now, wait just a minute. Let me get back to that meeting. Uh, you say that you, ha you have a special call meeting. A uh, motion you? made to have a special call. Well, no, you, but this, this meeting Friday, August the 10th, was a specially called meeting for the purpose of reporting on your uh, contract negotiation. No, it wasn't a special call oh. meeting. It's just a call meeting. See, when we oh. brought, when we went into negotiation, the people gave the committee a right, uh, which composed of five men, the plank committee, yeah. a right to call a meeting any time that they seen fit uh, oh, for the purpose of uh, giving them any uh, uh, news of how the negotiation was going along or any other business that we thought we ought to bring up and transact during the time of negotiation because we called all of our duly uh, union meetings off at that time uh, uh, because we didn't know when we could have them, how busy we could be, uh, where we could get uh, to them at that time or not, or where we'd have any news. And we only wanted to have meetings when we really had something to tell the people. Yeah, about negotiations. About negotiations. Now, has that been a practice that you followed in years gone past and you negotiations too? Uh, yeah, we did that several times. I see, okay. And uh, this wasn't a special call meeting, it was just a call meeting by the representatives. No, uh, instead, just a regular of your regular meeting, meeting. instead of your regular scheduled monthly or twice a month meeting. Yeah. The local union, while you were in negotiations, passed a motion and said that they wanted to not have the meetings at the regular time they were scheduled, but they said to the committee, you call us together any time you think that we ought to hear a report on these negotiations. That's right. And this was that kind of a that meeting. Was, that was. That was the August 10th meeting. meeting. That's right. Now, at that August 10th meeting, did your executive board make any recommendation, or did your uh, officers uh, make any recommendation that even suggested to the people that they would be better off if they decided to uh, uh, affiliate with any international union at that time? Did any officer make any recommendation? Uh, not. Uh any, any, uh, the, the way that the, it was done, and uh, that we had the meeting, and we uh, uh, seemed to have bogged down in negotiations. Yeah. And we told the people that uh, that we didn't believe. Uh, Leonard Webb was the one that had the mic at I that see. time, okay. and he told the people that he didn't believe that, that uh, and the status was in now that we could get any more from the company. Well, and I he. In my conversation with you, Bill, you remember uh, before y'all submitted your uh, new contract proposals to the company, the question came up about uh, the, uh, the recognition clause in the agreement, uh, which now recognizes Federal Labor Union number 21754, yeah. uh, about changing that to continue would make an agreement with the uh, Federal Labor Union, but also to provide uh, that in the event y'all later decided to affiliate, after you signed your contract, you yeah. later decided to affiliate with a national union or one of the internationals, 
that you'd have this successors or assigns clause in there so you wouldn't have to go through another labor board election and all that sort of thing. That's right. And y'all submitted that, just like we got it changed in the uh, electoral manganese contract yeah. where we got a federal labor union, and the company refused it. The company did refuse to, uh, that. And we, had, uh, we told the people that also, uh, that if uh, we went in and, and did uh, uh, sign, uh, sign a contract that way, why well, we wouldn't be allowed to get in and nice for three more years because it seemed to three year contract. Right. Yeah. The, the company, company was seemed to propose a three year contract and they would accept nothing less. It yeah. don't seem like. Okay, now. And now this is uh, the way it's been explained to me. You see, Art Potter was heading up the uh, negotiations. Uh, uh, remember, we made arrangements to bring Art in. That's right. To help you with the negotiations. And uh, uh, y'all, uh, now this this all comes, you know, later. But try to dig up the facts because yeah. of all these protests that have been made about what you did on uh, last Monday yeah. uh, when you voted to pay the steel workers, that uh, you all decided that if a company was going to hold to that attitude, uh, and in the, in the discussion, as I understand it, I wasn't at the meeting, you know, yeah. so I don't know. but. Uh, I understand that somebody from the floor, it wasn't an executive board recommendation, but somebody from the floor got up and made a motion to Joe have a special meeting uh, yeah. for the purpose yeah. of talking about and, uh, and vote on the question of whether you'd predict with the Steelworkers Union. That's right. In other words, you were going to get this, you were going to lick this successors or assign business That's uh, absolutely before right. the, you, you got to your new contract. That's right. And, I, and, and I, is that the real, that, is that probably the, uh, give me your own opinion, is that the basic reason do you think that uh, this move came to act so suddenly? Uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, had a, a, the, the, the greatest bearing on the, on the whole thing that it came that would act so suddenly and also now this is uh, the unions, the international union had been discussed by the membership throughout the Plant. And they were discussed. Well, the people were talking about it. The people were talking down about it. Plant. And down in the plane, all through, through the plane. And uh, we told them that, that, uh, that uh, gave them a fact that, uh, that uh, seemed that the company didn't want to have this uh, successes or sign put in, uh, put in the contract that, uh, that we would have to do something. Now, uh, Leonard uh, had the microphone, and he didn't uh, designate any international. He, he said uh, uh, that he didn't designate any international at all, that he may want the people to go for it. Another committee did. It came from an individual at the meeting. He made the motion that we uh, uh, have a special call meeting for the purpose of discussing voting on where to go into the steel workers union, the international union. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And at this meeting, uh, our bylaws contained to have a special call meeting and seven members must sign a, a request and hand it to the president. And this was done at that meeting. Mm -hmm. They had the request and they handed it to me. I called in a in form of a bulletin upon every bulletin board throughout the plane. I bulletin it, so it was my name signed on it, that we would have this special call meeting for this purpose only. I see. And we did that, and uh, with no one, the committee, or not anyone influencing it a bit. But after the motion was made, someone asked Mr. Webb, says, uh, well, what do you think? And he says, I will give you my personal idea. His personal opinion. That personal opinion. <clears throat> He said, I think, after viewing and seeing uh, these, uh, he went to Kansas City and yeah. was uh, on the boil. Boy, I went to the Boilermakers and looked them over too. He said, my personally is, uh, I think we should go into steelworks. I see. And uh, at that meeting, no one, another membership didn't know it, but the committee among themselves had agreed 
if they accepted any international or recommended any international to the people, which was not called for on that day, that they would recommend the steel workers to international. I see. And uh, uh, at this special call meeting, uh, the committee did. Uh, uh, the question was, well, how does this committee feel about it? Yeah. And at this special call meeting, it was recommended by the five men of the committee that we go into the steel work. And that's the first time that we'd made a recommendation to the people of any, any international. That's the first time we'd ever been asked to, and uh, 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 that we were sent as representatives, and we decided as uh, five people, all the, as the representatives of all this, what we would like to do and what would be the benefit best benefit for our people if uh, the Robert Shaw Company. I see. Well, now, let me ask you this. Did anybody at any time ever even hint to the workers that they uh, could not remain a Federal Labor Union? They knew that they could stay a Federal Labor Union as long as they wanted to, didn't they? They absolutely did. They, they didn't we, have to fit in with anybody. They were, we got a, a letter from Mr. Meany. It was read to the body of the people that they didn't have to go nowhere. If they did and wanted to go anywhere, it would be the choice of the people of that uh, federal local labor union. Uh, now, that that something school. that the members themselves had to decide and that's nobody that's from any right. international or anywhere else that's could right. tell them what they had to do. And that letter was read public in a meeting that we had that, that, uh, that uh, somehow, uh, uh, somewhere or another, they were, were getting out information that they was going to be forced over there. There wasn't going to be any more labor. They, and Mr. Meany uh, 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 sent us a letter that saying we didn't have to go anywhere. The people of the, the local union knew that they didn't have to go anywhere. This was a choice of their own and a decision of their own to go where uh, into the steel workers or go to any international. They knew that. And as officers, we had to be directed by the choice of the people. Okay. Well, well, the main reason I ask you, uh, Bill, if you'd be willing to make this uh, recording, and I'll say again, this is the 18th day of April, That's Saturday right. morning, 1956, and it's you who came by the office this morning, and I talking and it just occurred to me and I ask you if you'd be willing because That's I, I knew about right. this complaint. I hope it'll never be necessary to do a doggone thing with this recording. But I'd like to point out that uh, Nick Kirko is he's on our AFL CIO staff right. on this regional staff. He's been sitting here all the time, just sitting, hadn't said That's a word. Right. And he's a witness to this and uh, that uh, I have not stopped the machine, I have not tampered with it, there's no break in this uh, right. of any kind, and that uh, you did it of your own free will. I gave it on free, it. on free will, it wasn't <coughs> really hurt, it was just how I felt. Uh, wasn't any word prompted, you asked me to talk to you as naturally as no how, and answer questions, I agreed voluntarily to do that, and it was my own free will that I did it. That, that's well, now, if, if it becomes, I don't know whether anything will ever come of it, Bill, but if it ever does, tell me if it will be all right, tell me now, if it will be all right in case there is any investigation, and I don't know whether there will ever be or not, but if there's any investigation, am I free to uh, play this recording back or even make a transcription for the record or anything? You're free. I'll do anything you want to with it because of that. I think you, I, I, I've stated the knowledge. Well, I would only, I would only want I, it. The only reason I would want it, uh, want to make any use of it at all, Bill, is in case there's an investigation. And yeah. Then, of course, I would ask them to also see you and ask any other questions. I don't think anything will come of it, but if it does, well, I just want you to know that. Uh, Paul, you can use it in any way that you want to because it's an uh, honest truth. I've spoken the truth as much as I know how, and uh, I think our actions down there, I don't think we have anything to hide. I think it was all open. I think it did the right way. I think it was a 
choice of a people, the way they signed the cards. Uh, and uh, uh, when you say the way they signed their cards, that reminds me, you just got a little bit left on this tape. Yeah. George Lockwood called me the other morning on the phone. Uh, I don't remember the date. It must have been Saturday. It must have been about Thursday, I guess. Uh, anyway, he said that uh, uh, the special meeting y'all had last Monday, which was August the 13th, when y'all voted, y'all had two meetings. Right, yeah. When y'all voted, though, at that meeting, which was held out at Tyson Park, that's two yeah, meetings. That's right. He said that he had been told by a lot of people down there that the meeting was stacked with people from Alcoa and CIO members all over this former CIO members all over Knoxville. Now, did you see anybody at that meeting? I didn't see anybody at that meeting from uh, Maryville or any other uh, uh, member from any other plane except in ours. Uh, but in this meeting, there was international representatives. Uh, one of them was Pop Shell. And your uh, assistant regional director, <coughs> Art Carter, mm -hmm. and uh, Claude Mitchell was Claude there. Claude Mitchell was there from the Lumen Workers, and uh, there's one or two guys sat over on a bench from us, and I think they must have been boilermakers, uh, represented, international representatives. But you didn't see I any boilermakers represented at the meeting who, did. Did, who you knew were boilermakers reps. And we also seen a uh, 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 a man from 555 said way up on the bank, he took no part in the That's meeting, the machinist, uh, machinist local. Uh, he was a uh, uh, recording secretary and he just came out to observe. And that was Haley. And that was Ed Haley. Yeah. And that was the only one that I saw or, 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 uh, or could see that, that it was in the meeting. There wasn't any other from any other planes. Uh, we didn't have to stack stack anything, it wouldn't, uh, because it was the people of that place that wanted to do it. And you have had, haven't you had meetings before in Tyson Park? We have had plenty of meetings in Tyson Park. We've and had them during the contract. Why, why did y'all pick Tyson Park? Because it is favorable for our uh, place, it's right across from our plane, it's excessive to the people, it's easy gotten to, they can park their automobiles, and, and uh, we have had, uh, Lots and lots of meetings in Tyson Park for the purpose of uh, giving the people a chance to hear about the contract and, and also voting on the contract, were it accept or not accept it. In other words, you have it at Tyson Park when you want the maximum number of your people That's to right. come up. Well, we want, uh, when we can get the people the maximum number and when we want everybody that can possibly attend so that we will know that anything is done at that the meeting will be the majority of the people, right. where they can uh, have access to ten and be with the majority of them. We know most of that they do do that. I see. Okay, Bill. Well, I think that's uh, enough. Uh, Paul, I've uh, been glad to answer any questions. I ask them honestly, and uh, 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 anything that you want to know, I will tell you. Well, I know that. Glad to do it. Okay, well, the only thing, as I say, I hope nothing, no use will ever be made of it or ever be an occasion after well, any use of it. If there is, I just want to If there ever is, why well, you feel free to use it. Well, of course, anybody uh, that listens to the paper uh, also, time. I'm sure, talk to you, and uh, uh, I would want them to feel perfectly free That's to talk right. to you. And and I would want them to do it if they want to, and I'd hang them to my building and uh, uh, being honest. I could for the y'all. Okay, well, I'll close this out by saying that this is a tape recording made in the uh, office of the regional director, AFL CIO, 216 Flatiron Building, Knoxville, Tennessee, August 18, 1956, between Paul Christopher, regional director, of the AFL-CIO and Bill Johnson, who has been president for, how long have you been president, Bill? Uh, since uh, for Janu January. For January this year. January in 1956, and he took office as president of the Federal Labor Union, number 21754, 
at the Robert Shaw Fulton Controls Company in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we close it out now, Bill, with that. If you want to hear it read, uh, played back, why well, we can do that too. Uh, okay. Either way you want to do. All right.